they had the best record in baseball heading into the series and now Cleveland's ahead of them. But let's say this, the Phillies are 65 and 43. The Yankees are 65 and 45. So for as mm -hmm. bad as the Yankees have played, they're still up there with all those teams. You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. With me, as usual, my co-host Brian McKeon. Brian, oh, I wish I had a broom. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't, I can't believe it. A sweep over the Phillies, two out of three against the Red Sox. Are they rolling? I think they are. Before we get started, don't forget, subscribe to the podcast on whichever podcasting platform you prefer to listen to us to or listen to us on. That's the word I'm looking for. And subscribe to our channel on YouTube, like our videos, hit the bell so you're notified whenever our videos go live. We're inching towards 7,000 subscribers. Amazing. On today's show, the Yankees have a much deserved off day mm -hmm. and I'm kind of upset about it. So we're going to talk about that in segment three. Uh, we're going to review what the Yankees did during the trade deadline, give our grades. But first it was the DJ LeMayhew show. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like the point that I made yesterday almost stays true, right? That Chisholm is putting all this extra energy into the rest of the team that they all feel like their jobs can be taken at any moment. And one of those guys is definitely DJ LeMay who could, who could be losing his job to, to jazz. And I mean, did he pick it up? It, the, the grand slam was a very much like accidental, excuse me, swing, but it got over the walls. Who cares? Um, but then the RBI in the gap was just an RBI in the gap. It was a classic DJ LeMay who kind of hit, um, yep. it, really he had, a, he had a great game. The team itself had a great game, a game where you, I found this game very interesting when the lineups came out because you really feel like this could be the game. All right, they, 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 if they drop it, they, won, they still won two out of three in Philadelphia. They won two out of three in Boston. You couldn't have asked for a better road trip. You get back home all good and well. And for some reason, and, and I, I get it, Philly's kind of got a better stranglehold on things and a really big lead in their division, but the Philly's lineup was a punt lineup today, right? No, 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 real, no real Mudo, no Trey Turner. Um, Really, like, weird. Uh, Brandon Marsh didn't come in later on in the game. That they really put out a punt lineup for the Yankees, and you know the Yankees took advantage. Um, six runs scored. Clay Holmes, I was convinced wasn't going to get out of it, wasn't going to get out of it late. Did get out of it in the ninth inning. Um, they just they just they played a really sound game against a really good baseball team, and I I can't believe how much they're rolling right now. The the, the amount of runs they've scored really since the end of the All Star break, really since the Boston series began. It's so funny how it feels like the last time they were in Fenway was when it all collapsed. Yeah. And then it feels like the next time they went back to Fenway, it kind of caught back up with them again. And then they, they restarted, which is yeah. so strange, but it really does feel that way because I mean, their performance really since that Red Sox series, you, you cannot ask for more. Yeah. Um, Nestor Cortez pitching fine on the road. <laughs> PO'd. That's, that's gotta be what it was. I think yeah. he was annoyed. Yeah. I think he was annoyed. I think he was annoyed by the trade rumors that were around him over the last uh, 24, 48 hours. I, and I think he was annoyed at the disrespect that he was getting. And he went out there and he pitched really, really well and really confident. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was doing his uh, his thing, his swing, his swinging yeah, and when the he does, thing. When he does that, you know he's feeling himself. Yeah. He's got the confidence going. Yeah. And um, it's funny. I was watching the game and I timed it perfectly because as you all know, well, maybe if you're not, uh, a regular every day or you don't know this but I'm dog sitting for the week and I timed the walks with the dog to make it so I wouldn't miss the game and she'd be sleeping during the game so it was actually pretty per but I scared her during DJ's <laughs> especially the grand slam when I was like wait that's a home run and I was like yelling at the TV and she looked at me like what are you doing I'm like oh yeah you're not used to this your your parents aren't crazed like I am when they watch baseball games cuz I will say my friend who I'm dog sitting for he's a big Yankee fan but he's very laid back. He's the complete opposite of me. So mm -hmm. I'm sure she doesn't hear any screaming when Yankee games are on. So she was looking at me like, he's what most people are like, what are you doing? But um, yeah, it was, 
it was cool that it started at 12.35 also, because it's cool when the game is that early and then you have the whole rest of the day to kind of be- On a weekday, especially, yeah. Yeah, especially after they win and sweep. And this is a big deal. It's the first time the Phillies were swept in a three-game series all year. And probably the last. Probably. And they had the best record in baseball heading into the series, and now Cleveland's ahead of them. But let's say this. The Phillies are 65 and 43. The Yankees are 65 and 45. So for as mm -hmm. bad as the Yankees have played, they're still up there with all those teams. Well, it just goes to put to a test of how good the Yankee team was prior to them collapsing, right? I mean, mm -hmm. like how unbelievably dominant of a start they got off to. Um, but you it's can't, not a but it's not a collapse. The season has no, it, it, it is. <laughs> we'll call it's it a, a nose swoon, dive. Though. It's like we'll a nose a dive. Yeah. It is. It, it is a swoon. It's a nose dive. It, it, it's, yeah. it's, and, and again, it's not over. I mean, they, they could go yeah. back to playing awful next week and it, it all turns around again. They will not. It's no next week is August. They have their easiest schedule in August. They're going to be fine. I I'm telling you, I felt it going into the series. Believe my feelings. I'm sometimes right about this stuff. I'd like to. Again, I, I can't I can't get over how um unbelievably like they stayed in every single game against Philly and Philly made their pushes back, right? This team is this Philadelphia team is not a lay down and die kind of team. They no. make their pushes back there. This is a very this team, I'll tell you, is gonna be a problem come the postseason. They're gonna be hard to get out of series. Their back end of their bullpen is really good. They're gonna be impossible teams to get out of a series. Um but you watched the Yankees hung with them the entire time, stayed with them uh, late in games. Philly made pushes and the Yankees held on to sweep Philadelphia in Philadelphia. I mean, I didn't, you didn't remotely expect this. We were saying last week, right? It doesn't, yeah. we were saying, all right, they, after the Mets series, they get to Boston and, and then they have Philly, two really tough series. We don't expect much out of them. And then, then you get to August and then it kind of, you can kind of relax a little bit. You can kind of let your hair down a little bit. And instead it's, it's been the complete opposite. They were struggling coming into Boston. They lost the first Boston game, which kind of that first Boston game, they scored a lot of runs, but you kind of felt like, oh, what else is new? They score mm -hmm. a lot of runs and they lose that game. And then since then, they haven't lost a game. It's been five wins. Uh, there was a 14 run game in there. They've been as hot of a, as hot of a team as there is in baseball. They really have. And it's um, funny today. They only scored six. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that, but that was a, that would have been a godsend uh, two weeks ago when mm -hmm. they couldn't score anything. So yep. you, you got to take these good strides for what they're worth. I think beating good teams like this um, gives you a lot of confidence. I will say this. The comments after the game from Aaron Judge on um, when he was asked about Clay Holmes, mm -hmm. and he, he basically gave you a reassurance of Clay Holmes is our guy. That's our closer. I don't know what you want me to say. He's our closer. I get it. The captain of the team has to do that. And the captain of the team has to say those kind of things. What is he going to do? He's going to bury Clay Holmes. What, what good does that do for anybody? Um. I, Clay Holmes is not my closer, though. Well, I have I, as a Yankee fan, and I, I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments. Um, I, I don't know how anyone watches these games and 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 thinks that Clay and has confidence seeing Clay Holmes come in in the ninth inning because I have right. I have zero. I have I know he got out of it in seven pitches today. I don't know about you, Stace. I, I have I have zero confidence in him coming into any one run, two run games. I just don't, especially this year more than ever. I feel like he does better when he pitches more. Because I've, mm -hmm. if it seems as if when he's not, when he hasn't been in a game for like a few days and he comes in, he's all over he the place. And the he's zone. the type of pitcher who needs to pitch, which is yeah. not great because you you need to have a guy who you know, hey, maybe sometimes your team wins ten to one, eight to two, and they don't need you to come in, you know, and you're gonna yeah. have to sit for like two days, and you're gonna have to handle the fact that you're gonna sit for a couple of days and then come into a game and not completely fall apart. So M Mark Leiter to me is gonna become one of my favorite players in the Yankees. And I don't <laughs> know about you. Um <clears throat> the stuff is great, obviously. The the movement is great, the, the location's great, all that. The one thing I want to say about him that really needs to be said, <clears throat> the guts. Like he you could tell on his face. The bases got loaded. There was a wild pitch. There was a walk. Emotionless. Mm -hmm. Didn't feel a thing. Didn't care. Yeah, got out of it and gave a lot of emotion on the mound, which is great. You love to see that. When bleep was hitting the fan, there was deadpan. No yeah. emotion. No anything. And you want that out of your relievers. You do. I you feel want like that Tonkin out of your is like that too. Like Tonkin's he's a lot like that, that too. Yeah. Yeah, and you need you that. Like you that. need yeah. that out of out of late inning guys. You really need that. You need the emotionless. You need the the don't don't care attitude. And he had that. And and that inning uh, was the perfect example for Leiter Jr. of where you could see 
this is going to fall apart. And you could see a, a, a pitcher start to really panic. Right. And yet, you, you know, you get the hit by pitch. You had the walk, you had the, the, the dribbler that got him off many reasons why bases loaded in that scenario with it being a one run game. He could have really blown it. And mm -hmm. instead deadpan executes against Marsh has been one of the better hitters this year executes, gets out of the inning, then shows the emotion that's that shows a lot, and and that to me means a road game in in Cleveland, in Minnesota, in Houston, in a big playoff spot. He's not going to panic. He's right. not going to feel it. I'm going to have more confidence in him on the mound rather than Holmes. Yeah. So really, obviously, really good series from the Yankees. But the fact that, like we said, coming out of the Mets series, they look dead in the water, and. Mm -hmm. You know, with those two series on the road, especially starting off in Fenway, looming, you were just like, oh, this is going to be a disaster. Yep. And as much as I hated the way they lost on Friday night, they did put up a bit of a fight in that game. And I felt something turning. And then when something they won brewing, Saturday, yeah. yeah, you know, so I think they've gotten over the hump. You know, you, they're not going to win 20 games in a row, but I don't think they're going to go back to winning lose just two, one, win one, losing. Lose two, win one. Yeah. yeah. I feel like they've turned that corner. I really do. And it's going to be so much better in August. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button on our videos. Hit the notification so you know when our videos go up. Every Friday, we do Fan Mail Friday. So we leave the pinned comment Monday through Thursday. You leave your questions underneath that pinned comment, and we will read them on the show. Or you can join the Locked On Yankees Insiders Club. The link is in the description. You'll get texts from us about everything. This week was a busy one. Um, you can text us questions, comments, a lot of reactions to the series and to the previous five games just because everyone's so excited about the Yankees winning. And you get top priority on Fan Mail Friday when you're an insider. So you're usually in segment one, sometimes segment two. But there's a 14-day free trial, and everyone who's there loves it. Coming up, the trade deadline. What do we grade it? It's summer, and we all need to keep cool and stay hydrated. So when you're taking in America's pastime, don't forget to hydrate with Liquid IV's Popsicle Firecracker flavor, a surefire summer hit. Get hydrated with electrolytes, essential vitamins, and clinically tested nutrients from the number one powdered hydration brand in America, because baseball and summer go together like Liquid IV and indulgent hydration. Blast off with the iconic summer flavor of Popsicle Firecracker, a festive blend of citrus-fueled lemon-lime, tart cherry, and raspberry flavors. Find all your favorite flavors on their website from lemon-lime to pina colada, but personally, I love strawberry lemonade and I drink it after my workouts. Tear, pour, live more. One stick and 16 ounces of water hydrates better than water alone. It also has three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink and eight essential vitamins and nutrients. No more thirsty summers when you indulge in hydration with Liquid IV. Get 20% off your first order of Liquid IV when you go to liquidiv.com and use code MLB at checkout. That's $20 off your first order when you shop better hydration today using promo code MLB at liquidiv.com. And Locked On Yankees is also sponsored by Supply House. Get supplies from the site that's made for the skill trade, supplyhouse.com. Supplyhouse.com is the reliable way to order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical products online. Their easy-to-use website is packed with helpful resources and the latest product info to help you get the job done right. Shop a complete inventory of over 200,000 parts from over 400 top brands and get your order delivered right to your door with fast shipping from coast to coast. Need help with an order? Get expert support and industry-leading service from the friendliest folks in the business and talk to a real person every time. Pros in the skilled trades get a competitive edge by joining SupplyHouse.com's free Trade Master program. Every Trade Master gets access to a dedicated phone line, free shipping, and discounts on every order. Join the thousands of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership at SupplyHouse.com slash TM, which stands for Trade Master. Order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from anywhere with just a few clicks at SupplyHouse.com.
Welcome back to Locked On Yankees. Locked On Sports Today is a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the noise. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And don't forget, you can catch every pitch of the Yankees' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Yankees. I have to say, I was enjoying listening to Ricky Ricardo go nuts over Jazz Chisholm the other night. <laughs> <laughs> I was enjoying his calls. I was like, yes, I'm like, someone's using like, you know, jazz stuff because that's, that's what you should do. He has the best name for home run calls. I mean, he I, might. I wonder what John I'm, Sterling's would have been. Well, I'm thinking, I'm trying to think of like old... You know, because all yeah, of his it would have been references... some old timey like 1940s jazz reference that no one would have understood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or maybe some like some people who were into like musical theater or whatever. Maybe yeah. some song has you know, but yeah, it would probably be something like that. So uh, the trade deadline has come and gone, and the Yankees made some moves, and hey, they're paying off so far a couple of them. So oh, geez, know. immediate immediate <laughs> dividends on those. Um, yeah. I don't know uh, if I felt as confident after the trade deadline as I felt. Uh, in the, in the days or hours afterwards, right. It feels like they, they maybe handled it a little more conservative than I would have liked, mm -hmm. but also a little more mature than I might, I might've handled it too, because I think quite frankly, they realized the market was too expensive. The asks were too expensive and they decided to go their own route and acquire what they wanted and what they needed, which is, which is the right move. Um, I yeah. don't know, uh, to me. And we will have this argument probably later on in the offseason. The longer you hold on to Spencer Jones, the worse it gets, especially if you re-sign Juan Soto. But we can get into that uh, later on. The biggest uh, winner to me in all of the deadline was the Dodgers. Yeah, I was going to um, say. <laughs> they completely bellied up. They got everything they could possibly need. Jack Flaherty, Tommy Edmond, Ahmed Rosario, Michael Kopech, Kevin Kiermeyer. I mean, they got they got more than they could possibly need. Mm -hmm. Um, they, they, they really, uh, bust, bolstered up for a postseason run. I still don't think I would take them over the Phillies in a big series. I don't either. I just, <laughs> I just like the Phillies starting rotation more. I like the back end of their bullpen more. I think the Dodgers did what they could do. It just, for some reason, feels like it hasn't been able to gel all year for the Dodgers. It hasn't all been able to come together at the same time for them, which is crazy, but there's a, there's a lot of teams out there that I think can cause a lot of problems that are, could be really big dark horses in the postseason this year. I, the Dodgers don't feel that intimidating to me. You know what the Dodgers feel like to me? The mid early ish to mid 2000 Yankees who yeah. were always like good and always made the playoffs, but always there's inevitably. There's talent there. There's talent yeah. there. Sure. But is it, you know, is this a world series contender? Truly? I think it's a contender. Is it going to win yeah. the world series? I, I have much more faith in Philadelphia. I really do. Um, and then I look at the rest of uh, the, the teams in the deadline, too. I look at a team like Atlanta, who, how could you be happy if you're an Atlanta Braves fan? They made a trade for Jorge Soler, and that's it. That's all they did. <laughs> um, Arizona made a lot of cool early moves. Um, the, uh, but And to me, the other big team that I think comes away from this, and this is what scares me even more than any other teams, is the Baltimore Orioles. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think more moves could have been made for them. I'm surprised they didn't go after Crochet. Because I, I thought I thought Crochet to me fit their mold very well, right? Where they have the money to give him, they could have added him on and gave, and gave him the money. But also, you you, you keep taking into account they had the prospect pool to get him, and it wasn't going to kill their farm system as much as other teams. And from the reports that came out today, it looked like the White Sox were asking for Dominguez and Jones for Crochet. And then if that's the asking price, then no. Um, no. But the, but but they have more uh like the problem is the, the the Orioles had more prospects to offer up. And I don't think you were getting a Jackson Holiday who by the way hit his first career home run today as as a grand slam a which grand is impressive. Slam. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think you were getting a prospect like that but they have so many other prospects that you would have been able to move. It, it was crazy. This is what they added. Um Zach Eflin, Trevor Rogers, Grayson Rodriguez, that adds on to Corbin Burns and Dean Kramer. So mm -hmm. that's a really 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 good uh starting rotation. Um, Sir Anthony Dominguez is still back there. Gregory Soto, Kimball, and Cano. They, they've got a really, really, really insane team. They're going to be really hard to beat in the postseason. I think what you have over the Orioles, though, is experience. And yeah. the Orioles don't have a lot of that. I mean, there's a lot of young players that have to really kind of 
go through it before they're going to be able to be, you know, comp in a playoff series. The other team that I think that made some decent moves that I like a lot going into um, the postseason, and I think is going to be a scary team that not a lot of people saw making a lot of noise and could make a lot of noise. Noise. The Seattle Mariners. Mm. Um, their starting rotation is really, really, really good. They don't give up a lot of runs at all. Their problem all year has been that they're not, they're not able to score. Mm-hmm. They can't score runs. And this deadline, picking up Randy Rosarena from the from the, from the Rays and picking up Justin Turner. Those are two massive moves. Justin Turner, not the Justin Turner he was on the Dodgers for, for sure, but he's still a very professional hitter, puts the ball in play, gives you long, really good playoff at-bats. Th- those are two moves that, I think go very underrated and can really help help, help this offense out a lot. Again, they've had a lot of trouble scoring runs, but they they pitch like like anybody else. I mean, as good as anybody else in the league. I don't know if they're going to catch. Uh, they're going to stay with Houston all year because Houston just got that. I don't know what it is. It's just they just have that every year where they're just back in the same place, back in the same place. It's it's quite frustrating, but it's every mm-hmm. single year with them. But Seattle's a scary team that I think could could catch someone early on in the postseason. Um, to me though. I look at the AL going into the playoffs and after this trade deadline as fairly wide open, right? I think mm-hmm. Seattle got better. I don't think Boston got much better. I don't I think the Yankees got marginally better. I think their their lineup got longer with Chisholm in the middle, for sure. It forces you to pitch the judge now. It forces you, you know, they, their lineup like lengthened for sure. I think Flyer, I think the the um lighter ed at the at the back end of that bullpen is unbelievable. And I think it's gonna prove to be unbelievable. I think it lengthens the bullpen. And I think you're getting a lot of pieces back. Um, the Mariners, I think, really improved. Houston didn't really improve. There's not a lot of other AL competitors that really improved other than Baltimore. And Baltimore, I think you have to be genuinely scared of. And in the NL, like we said, I think it's the Phillies versus everybody else. Mm. I really do. Yeah. Although um, you say Kikuchi went to the Astros and – the Yankees have that thing with him where sometimes they do really badly against him. And then other mm-hmm. times they hit him really well. It's almost like an every other time they see him sort of thing. So hopefully they do have a tendency of, t- of finding the right guy going into the postseason, though. Yeah. The Astros, right. The year with the year with Granky, Garrett Cole, they, they find that they, for some reason they have that thing with them where they, they know the right pitcher to trade for. Whereas yeah. the Yankees trading for top end starters has not worked out at the, at the deadline before. It seemed to has it seems to have worked. I worked out a lot for the Houston Astros. There's no justice. I'm just no. kidding. Coming up next, no, the Yankees not. have a much deserved off day. But are we actually really happy about that? Because I'll spoiler alert: I'm actually not happy about it. But we'll explain no. why. <laughs> If you're looking for tickets to just about anything, check out the app Game Time. Game Time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and shows near you. The Yankees are playing their longest homestand of the year on Friday night, and Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the moments before the game starts and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute seats. So if you decide to go to Yankee Stadium at 7 15 or for a 7 05 start, you can still snag tickets. You can also find exclusive flash deals and sponsor deals on tickets for WNBA basketball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the app today and get $20 off your first purchase with code one word locked on MLB. Terms apply. That's code L O C K E D O N M L B for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories today with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that are covering every topic from every league. Find Locked On Sports today now, available on the free Fire TV channels app. And remember that you can catch every pitch of the Yankees' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. You just gotta download the SXM app and search the word Yankees. Stacey, Yankees get an off day on Thursday. Um, comes at a, at a at a weird time, right? In a in a game in a time when you thought they were really going to need this off day coming up. <laughs> yeah. Now they almost don't need it as much. Yeah. Uh, the only people who need it, obviously, the bullpen guys, but the rest of the guys, 
you know, when you're a hitter, you want to be in rhythm and you don't want to lose that rhythm that you're in. Um, it's just funny thinking about last week at this time mm -hmm. and thinking, oh my God, thank God. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> they need time off. This is ridiculous. They're awful. And uh we needed amazing. time off as fans. As yeah. fans, we needed time off. We really did. Like every off day this past month and a half, like we were relieved because it was just awful yeah. watching them. And these past the past six games, I'll say it, even Friday, even though they lost, it was still, they did well until they didn't. And, you know, the bulk pen kind of coughed it away, but just what a difference a week makes. It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's really uh, changed so much. I think they do need the day off just because of the bull, the bullpen really needs a day off. Um, yeah. They've, they used them like crazy in that, in the Philadelphia series, but you come home to the longest, uh, the longest home stand of the season. Um, there's going to be a different mood in the Bronx than there has been. Just because of the of the winning streak they went on, they're going to get better opponents too. Again, this this month, I mean, it, it can't be understated how easy the schedule they have this month. It, it it gets so unbelievably simple. The opponents that they see, not even remotely close to what they are. This finished off the month of eight of of July, but they get the Blue Jays who have who have essentially given up. Um, like th th they're they're done. I mean, if you look at the look at their whole, they traded away a bunch of a bunch of players. That their efforts against Baltimore in this series were lackluster to say the best. Um, the Blue Jays are basically done. The Angels, who are awful. Texas, who is very middling. And then look at this. White Sox, Tigers, Guardians is tough. Rockies, Nationals. I mean, yeah. that is, you cannot ask for a better month than you can than that. You get, yeah. uh, you get what? Five out of the bottom seven teams in all of baseball? Yeah. You, you, you got to get that here. Roll. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. need to steamroll over all of them, especially the Rockies. Um, the White Sox, the White Sox, the Nationals, like those, especially the White Sox. I mean, mm -hmm. my God, oh, they're they they're barely just, a major league team. They're so bad. I felt like I, I say it all the time. I've said it many times on the show. If you listen to the show all the time, I feel so bad for the people in Chicago who root for the White. There's no excuse for this team to be as bad as it is, and it drives me crazy that it's no, like the number three market in the country, and Reinsdorf just does not want to spend ever. Well, look <laughs> it's at like, what are you ago. doing? Look at three years ago going into COVID. I mean, the, the, the amount of talent and young players that they had available to them, right, that were on their team, the Eloy Jimenez, Luis Robert Jr., Michael Kopech. I mean, you had so many of the best players in uh, young players in baseball that were locked up to, to for a long amount of time, and they're terrible. They're, they're a terrible, terrible baseball team. Um, I don't know what you do if you're that Chicago team. They're unwilling to spend money. Um, they're unwilling to make improvements, it seems like. They just thought their young players were going to take off. And not and not improve around them. Um, that's what makes it seem like Baltimore scary, right? Is Baltimore oh, yeah. right now feels like what Chicago could have been a few years ago. You have that young talent around, but none of those guys are making any money. So you're going to be able to not only have that young talent develop, but also trade those, uh, uh, sign other veteran players to become available. Baltimore is in the position that Chicago was circa 2019. Let's just see if Baltimore can take advantage of it. I think they will with their new owners. Oh, I can't find it. A friend of mine who's a White Sox fan quote tweeted someone who named all the guys that the White Sox had in mm -hmm. 2021 and they're no longer with. So it was like, you know, all the guys you It'll mentioned, shock you. you know, like Tim Anderson, like just when you look at that team. Oh, you know what it was? I think it was a Jeff Passan tweet. It was a Jeff Passan tweet. Yeah, I saw it. I saw, I saw it before, too. Yeah. In the years and, that they were all arbitration eligible. And yeah, it was yeah. just like, oh, it was all 2026, 2027. Like, uh, how, how is this team not going to be good? Yeah. And it just it goes just... to show that's why you got to take advantage. Like, that's why you got to think, you know, when the Yankees are, you know, in their ALCSs and stuff, you don't know when it's going to collapse. You don't know when, when you're going to get back there again. Right. Um, it's just, you can't believe it with the White Sox though, because no one in their right mind saw them being this bad. They are, they only have 27 wins, right? They were on a 15 game losing streak. Did they win was today? It, was it 15 or 14? It was 15. Uh, only, the only reason I know that is because fi a 15 game losing streak for Chicago um, broke the record uh, for them as a franchise. The record for them as a franchise prior was 14 games. Do you know when that record was set? Uh, in the 1900s. In May. Oh, was in it May? May? <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Someone mentioned that they had a previous. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So they I have they that. have broken two of their franchises' longest losing streaks of all time in the same season. 
Yeah, they lost 10-3 to the Royals on Wednesday. And so that is they now are 16 now, in a row. They are 27 and 84. I mean, that, that is that's as bad as that they they're gonna I mean am I am I crazy to say at this point they would have to go on a tear to not break the Mets record. Right. But they'd have yeah, to play exceptional the last two months. This is all time bad. That is just it's ridiculous. Um he needs to sell the team because there's no excuse for it. <laughs> no, but I don't think he's going to with the amount of teams that he owns in that area. No, he's not. He's no. gonna hang on to it forever. Until his just... kids sell it. Yeah, just ridiculous. Oy. Um, so yeah, off day. Uh, if you have fan mail Friday questions, please leave them below. If you're an insider, get them in before Thursday evening ish. And um, yeah, because the next show is fan mail Friday. And if you are an insider, you know you get top priority, and you can leave your question under our pinned comment, and you will also make it on the show unless. And I say this all the time, unless your question's a duplicate, because there are a lot of times you, you get like four or five questions yeah. that are just the same question, worded different, and I just randomly pick it. So one more time, you can catch every pitch of the Yankees hometown broadcast with Sirius XM. Just download the SXM app and search the word Yankees. And now you want to because they're playing so well. You know, last week you wouldn't want to do that, but now you do. And before we go, we want to thank you for making Locked On Yankees your first listen. For your second listen, enjoy the Locked On MLB podcast. Host Paul Sullivan, a.k.a. Sully, is here daily to provide national expertise with his trademark humor to get you or to help you get ready for the MLB playoffs here in the dog days of summer because we are here. It is August 1st. Can't believe it. Prepare for the fall classic with Sully, who has it all covered every single day on Locked On MLB, available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So that'll do it for this edition of Locked On Yankees. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias. And I'm Brian McKeon. We'll see you tomorrow for Fan Mail Friday. <laughs>